Okay, uh, now now back to this issue of does this really work? Okay, can we really uh, decrypt here? Well, okay, so the question is this. Uh, the ciphertext is given by uh, uh, m raised to the e mod n, and then we want to know, and we can always do that. Again, that's just a mathematical operation. The question is, can we get back the message from the ciphertext? So the question is, does this give us back you know, does this operation here give us back the original message? Okay, well, what is C? C is just M to the E, so substitute that in. So what we're really trying to show is this gives us this, okay? If we can show that, then we're good. We got a system that actually works. If it doesn't work, that would be big news, you know, so pay attention here. Maybe we can get a paper out of this. Right. Okay, so. We do need one uh, important uh, result here uh, from, it's kind of a well-known, it's a very well-known result from number theory. It was known for you know, hundreds of years before uh, RSA was invented. Uh, and we won't prove it or anything, but we'll just make use of this fact. Okay, so what it says is if these two numbers, x and n, are relatively prime, then x to the phi of n is one mod n. So what is phi of n again? Were you guys here last time? Yeah. I seem to recognize some faces from last time. Toshin function. Yeah, it's the Euler's Toshin function, and what does it do? Number of numbers less than n that are relatively prime. There you go. Number of numbers less than n that are relatively prime to n. Okay, so it's, it's a number theoretic sort of function, and it's just kind of a weird, odd little result, but it turns out we can take advantage of this to build a public key crypto system. Okay. Okay, so we just, just some facts. This is the way things were set up, okay? You know mathematicians, here's how they work, right? What did they do? They started with this theorem, okay? And then they rigged the game so they could use this theorem to make everything work out in the end, right? Okay, so the reason we chose E and D and you know all those things the way we did was so that we could make use of this theorem, all right? So, okay, so because of the way we set things up, choosing the public and private key, uh, E times D is 1 mod P minus 1, Q minus 1, okay? Uh, now, what does that mean, mod, this is 1 mod P minus 1, Q minus 1? Well, the definition of mod says what? It says take this number, divide it by this, and you get, you get some quotient, but you get a remainder of, Uh, pulling my hair out. Okay, so, right, you get a remainder of one when you do this division. That's what mod means, okay? Now you get some quotient. I don't know what that quotient is. I don't really care. Let's just call it K. So we get some quotient, and we get a remainder of one. So that says this has to look like this. It's some multiple of P minus one, P minus one, with one left over, okay, for some K. I don't know what K is, but it turns out it won't matter. B of N. Okay, we looked at the to totient function, right? We talked about that just briefly. Okay, we mentioned that V of a prime is equal to, a prime P is equal to, I think we need a quiz here, you know. We really need something to wake people up, you know, get them out of their stupor. Okay, so we mentioned that V of a prime P is P minus one, right? So you look at the number of numbers less than P that are relatively prime to P, they all work. Okay, now you, you can extend that. This is P times Q, right? So P of P times Q is P minus one, Q minus one. Okay, so combine all these facts together and we get this result. Okay, take E, D here, subtract one from both sides. What do you get? You get K times P minus one, Q minus one. What is P minus one, Q minus one? It's just V of N. Okay, so this is equal to K times V of N. Okay, this is the thing that's going to make it all work out together with Euler's thing. Okay, so here we go. We want to start with this. We want to end up with this. Okay, so m to the ed. Well, first thing we do is the mathematician's favorite trick. What is the mathematician's favorite trick? Add zero. Okay, we'll add zero in the exponent in this particular case by subtracting one and adding one. It didn't change anything, right? So we group these two guys together, and we have an extra m to the first by basic properties of exponents. 
Now the goal is to get this guy just to go away, and then we'll be done, right? Well, okay, what's E D minus one? Well, according to this, it's A times V of N. So now I've got M times M to the power K to the times V of N. Again, use properties of exponents. I can take that K and write M to the V of N, raised to the K, it's just the way exponents work. So now I've got this M to the V of N mod N. Hey, that looks kind of like this theorem up here, right? You've got the same N here, you've got the same N here. So that guy there is just one. One to the K is always one. So it just goes away and you're just left with M. Okay, so, it, yeah. I don't interrupt you. No, that's okay. Go ahead. So how big does this number N need to be or P and Q? Oh, that's a good question. Because you okay, can factor so, integer relatively quickly. That's right. Um, and, you know, just to show you here. Our next example, we're going to give a real example with numbers in here, okay? We're going to choose large primes 11 and 3, <laughs> just so we can work it by hand. Now, if you want to do this in practice, how big uh, do these numbers have to be? You can actually, you know, there's a formula that shows you, based on the best known attacks, on best known factoring algorithms out there, how many, how, how many bits does the modulus need to be in order to be equivalent to a certain size symmetric key? Uh, you know, what's considered kind of minimal today would be 1,024. So a modulus of 1,024 bits. How, how big is this modulus? 33? It's like five bits. <laughs> okay, so we're talking 1,024. Uh, people often use 2,048 as kind of a, a standard. Today. So we're talking big, big numbers. Yeah. Okay, but let's just look at an example here with really small, simple numbers. Okay, we start off with two primes. We're trying to construct a public and private key. Okay, first thing you do is you form the modulus, and it's the product p minus p times q. Next, we form the product p minus one q minus one. And what do we need next? We need the encryption exponent. <coughs> what does the encryption exponent have to satisfy? relatively prime to this product, p minus one, q minus one. Well, I'll choose three because it's the smallest number that works, okay? Now what's left? I need to choose d. Uh, what's d? What properties does d have to satisfy? It's the multiplicative inverse of this guy, mod 20. Okay, so what number can you multiply times three to get one mod 20? Seven. 21 is one mod seven. So there we go. We've got a public and private key pair. Okay, so I'm going to keep the private key and not tell anybody that. I'm going to take the public key and publish it on my website. Okay? Now, you want to encrypt a message for me. How do you do that? You get my public key, and what do you do with it? Get your message in. What do you do with M? Raise it to G power mod 33. Okay, and that's what you're going to send to me. Uh, okay, so again, public key, private key. Suppose you generate a message. All messages, everything you ever deal with are bits, okay? So we treat the bits as numbers in RSA. Okay, so it's one, zero, 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 that's eight. Okay, one, zero, however many zeros. Okay, it's one, zero, zero. Okay, so it's eight, uh, so we treat it as a number. Now to encrypt that, you take that to the third power, mod 33. And 8 to the third is 512. Take it mod 33, you get 17. You send me 17. Okay. How do I decrypt that? Well, I have the private key, right? That's not right. Private key is 7. That's right. Okay, so I take the number you sent me and raise it to the seventh power, mod 33. Well, even for these tiny little numbers, this is getting pretty large, right? Okay, so you're just going to have to trust me or punch it in your calculator quick and you will see that you actually get 8. So if, at least in this case, the encryption and you know, the decryption gives us back what we start with. Okay. Uh, okay, now again, back to this issue of using really big numbers, right? Now the key operation here, the crucial operation in RSA is modular exponentiation. So we're exponentiating things and taking the results mod something. Well, think about it. 
you know, for realistic sizes. This is thousands of bits. N is thousand, you know, over a thousand bits, right? D and E are hundreds of bits, okay? So you're taking numbers that are represent, you know, are represented as thousands of bits. You're taking them to exponents that are hundreds of bits. How can you do that? Okay, we've got to think a little bit about how we actually do